Hey everybody, it's Kathy from Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. I hope you're having a great weekend. And I hope you're ready to start making Christmas presents for your family. And I want to show you what I've got in mind here. I thought about doing a Christmas themed barn quilt. And so let me show you my pattern. I think it's pretty simple, and um, I think you'll like it. Well, you see how I drew my lines? I always graph it out. Well, I graphed it out backward. But you could tell what I'm trying to do here. I'm always doing something backward. But anyway, you see that I have a Christmas tree in the middle. And the arrows are called uh, arrowhead. And that is basically what the pattern is. It's, uh, it's called an arrowhead, but I put the Christmas tree in the middle. Make it a little Christmassy. And I, I, think, um, I think it's going to be pretty simple to get our the graph down on our board and I'm trying to keep this video short but give you enough information too but anyway I always have this continuing saga with the painters tape but you know the more I use this it's a delicate surface by Scott and I got it at Lowe's the more I use it seem like the better I like it. It's real thin. It's not real wide. Um, and it's not thick. So it doesn't leave a ridge on your paint. You know, some paint, you have to go over it three times, in some cases four, and it'll leave a little ridge on your, on your board when you're painting, uh, especially if you only did three coats of one other color. But anyway, this is real, real thin, and it doesn't do that near as bad. So, anyway, I'm thinking I'm becoming a believer in this tape. <laughs> Never thought I'd give up the green stuff. But anyway, let me show you what I have. Of course, I have the pencils, the scissor, the eraser, and the ruler. And that's kind of essentials there. And, you know... Still looking for that clear yardstick. I'll find it one day. All right, and here's our colors. This this one is a really dark green, sort of a, a bright dark, if that makes sense. And I think for the big arrowheads, the arrowheads, the bigger blocks here, I think I'm going to put a little bit of black in that paint, just darken it up a little bit, and then I could have the blocks in the normal color. And I think it'd give it a good contrast. I'll probably make the tree, I'm not sure what color yet for the tree. But anyway, and then... I have the flat black, flat white, I'm sorry. And I put it in this tube because I was running out um, of the can. And I, I just put it in that uh, container, I'm sorry. And it comes out a lot easier. And one tip that I saw is to pour a little bit of that paint into that little tiny cup and not paint from your can, um, and it wouldn't gunk it up so bad around the top. So I'm going to try that and see if it happens. Um, it kind of makes sense, but I don't know. But anyway, here's my heat tool. Uh, 350 degrees is the maximum. Um, it doesn't blister your paint unless you're just right on it, holding it there. So if you're just, you just want to, dry your paint in between the colors. This little, it's really an embossing tool uh, for crafts, but it 
it works wonders drying the paint on barn quilts like this. I just really like it. I like it better than a hair dryer, but you can use a hair dryer. And I know I'll, you just love my paint on it. I've decorated it right. <laughs> that coming from acrylic pores more, uh, more or less. But anyway, let's get our pattern back and look at it. Now, let's start drawing that pattern on this barn quilt. You see, I've already measured it out. Um, I put, I wanted a one inch border around it. I thought that would be pretty. I'm not sure what color I'm going to put that yet. But I just really thought that would be pretty and, and make the pattern itself stand out more. So I just went one inch all the way around. And then I had 22 inches left. And you see I needed to make eight blocks in that 22 inches so you know that didn't go in even I had to do a little bit of calculating here but I just um, all I did was divided 8 into 22 I think I got 2 and 3 fourths and that's the size that I made the blocks but do the math yourself <laughs> make sure I'm right but that wasn't hard to do. Just divide 8 into 22 and whatever it came out as. Um, that's the size of each block. So you just go up along your ruler and make your block, make your lines and then connect all your dots. And um, you have 8 across and 8 up. And now all you have to do is follow the lines. First line, make the lines same as what you have in your pattern. See, that's the three that's going to be the blocks. And we're just, we don't have to draw on that. We're just going to make sure we paint them. So it's really going to be a very simple pattern to draw. And so you see that it's all the way across. You know, you, uh, it's going to be diagonal and anyway let's just take our blocks one at a time you see I count I'm counting over one two three and on the fourth block I'm going from right to left down and then I'm going from right no from left to right down on that one and you see we've got the first line drawn and now in the second row we don't have to draw anything you just have to keep your pattern out so you'll know where you're where you're um, what blocks you're coloring but you see on this third row we only have to make the top of the arrowhead and that's it for drawing on that line See, the rest of them, well, that's going to be colored, but the rest of them is going to be our white. And we're just going to go up to the fourth line and draw the bottom of the arrowhead. So you get what I'm doing. Once you get that graph drawn, it's not very hard to just follow it along on your blocks and draw the lines, just real simple, and then you start coloring it in. Now, I'm going to speed up the rest of this, because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do this at regular speed. And I'll be back when I'm finished.
So we have our pattern on here, except for our tree. And if you look at the tree, it's basically these blocks are about two and three quarters tall. So I've got three of my triangles making the tree inside those two blocks. Well, inside the four blocks, actually, that are, that are in the middle. And you can make as many um, shapes on your tree as you want to, but I thought three looked look good to me. So I'm going to draw that on there in a little while. I'm going to wait um, and start taping up, and I'm going to come back and draw that tree. So I'm going to start taping up. And but first, I, I do want to thank you all for watching my videos. And I really appreciate each and every one of you that have subscribed to my channel. Um, as long as people are watching it, I want to keep doing the videos. Um, and I love doing these barn quilts. I just love it. Now, I like the acrylic pour too, but my heart just... I just keep thinking about the barn quilts, and I just want to do one right after the other. And I'm excited that I have some hanging in a, a shop in Shelby, North Carolina. And I've sold a couple of them, so um, I'm excited about that. So anyway, um, let me just keep painting, taping up and painting, and I'm going to just uh, speed the rest of it up until we get to a, another place that I need to stop and tell you about. Um, and I'm putting my first coats of the green on, and you see I've put a little bit of black in that green to darken it down a little bit. Um, and I'm going to dry between each coat and basically just uh, pull the tape up. But you see my, my dark paint, how... how I put that black in it to make it a little bit darker. I really think that's going to be the the right thing to do. I think we'll like it better that way. We'll see. <laughs> All else fails, we can paint it again, right? Okay, I'm going to put some music on and let you just watch this. look we got the we got the four arrowheads drawn now we just have to do these blocks and so we have 12 blocks to tape up and paint and we're going to use the regular paint this time I, I can't remember the exact name of that green paint but I think it's something like uh 
very green or I better not even say that because I don't remember. <laughs> I'll check it. I'll find out. Okay. Here we go. We're going to start. I'm going to save that. Um, I'm going to save that and I may actually do this border in that dark green. I hope I have enough. Um, but I'm just going to put a lid on that in a little bit. So it don't dry out. And now um, I want to do those blocks. So I am going to stop talking again. <laughs> Y'all favorite part of the video, right? Okay, I'm going to stop talking and just let it run again. And uh -huh. Hey, we're almost finished now. It don't take much after this. It, this is really an easy barn quilt to make. If any of you want to do one, this would be a very easy one. And you can put it all different colors. Like I'm making this one green because I want to be Christmassy. But you can make it um, turquoise. You can make it in blues. You can make it in silver and reds. All kind of colors that you can make this same pattern and make it look so different. So, um, just, if you want to make one, just explore what colors you like. Lavenders and purples and reds and pinks or silver and black, whatever. But, okay. I promise I'm going to quit talking now. Hit subscribe if you hadn't already, okay? All right, here we go. painted I told you I was gonna wait and paint this before I come back but I got excited about the star and I can't wait to peel that off and I hope I hope I did the lines right but if I didn't I'll come back and fix it 
a little bit of bleed through right there. And some right here too. Oh, I went over it. But you know, that's something we can fix. There's no big deal. I go back and uh, use a little tiny brush when I'm finished. A little bitty, bitty tiny brush. And go back and find all those little spots like that. And fix them. I like the details. <laughs> Look how pretty. You can see the difference in the white. This is the kills. I'm not sure I told y'all that. Did I tell you I put the coat of kills on first before I started putting my pattern on it? I can't remember if I did. Okay, look. Isn't that pretty? That tree's going to go right in here. All right, I'm going to get the rest of it done. I promise this time, and I'll be back. Except for the Christmas tree. And I know these points will be the middle of my tree. I'm going to have to measure across here. I think it's a little bit over five inches. And try to center the tree in there. And I want three sizes going up. So... I might do some measuring and figuring, but I hope it turns out all right. But I like it so far. 
if I hadn't made my mind up to put the Christmas tree in the middle, you, you see what I was saying earlier about you could do it your way. You could put anything in here. You could put your initial or anything in the middle here. So, or just leave it just like that. But I think I'm going to go ahead and put the Christmas tree in because that's what I got my mind made up to be. Um, I want this to be a Christmas themed quilt. So, I have to get my nerve together and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll be back in a little bit, hopefully. I don't know if y'all can see that tree or not. That's not the best looking Christmas tree I ever saw. There y'all straight. Maybe it'll look better once I get it painted, but it's pitiful. Poor little tree. Oh, me. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, y'all, I got it. <laughs> I think the wind's blowing my tree a little bit, but it's on there. I don't know how it got crooked with straight tape, but it is. But hey, a tree is not perfect, is it? Just like the rest of us, we're not perfect. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go around and clean up some of the edges right here. And then I'll be finished with it. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And I hope it didn't get too long. I'm going to try to keep it under 15, 16 minutes. But I'm going to put some pictures on at the end of the video of other barn quilts that I've done. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I hope you subscribe to my channel. Bye.